Excuse me, ma'am. I think you just stepped in a big pile of dew. Doofy doo. And his doofy doo talk through of Sheer and the Wanderer, episode 6. The last episode, we had just obtained the magical staff of Pimp Slappery. And we were coming ever closer to the base of Mount Vaginus. That frog angel enemy is always super pissed off. But we found a plating scroll, which will make our quip sword and shield unrustable. That'll be helpful later on on the two floors right before we enter Mount Vaginus. And yet another Cooperling. Oh, and a Snot Piggy. Throwing rocks at me. Snot Piggies blow their nose at you, and then they also throw rocks from far away. At least I hope they're rocks. Please tell me they're rocks. And Pig Snot does way more damage in this remake for some reason. I guess over the years, pig pathogens developed some kind of antibiotic resistance. Only the Japanese could make a tank cute with a little bow. So wait, kill it, kill it. Oh, whew. you got Piggy Hendrix over there. Excuse me while I hump the ground. I still have a scroll of sleep stuck in my change jar. I could break it open, but I don't have a lot of room, so I'm just gonna leave it in there for now. Hopefully, I don't hit any monster houses. Oh no, they gave that. It's not piggy and Audi belly button. That is disgusting. On a human, I don't mind, but you know, on a man pig, a little creepy. The humble jar of holding is actually really important in this game because, as everyone knows, there's no better feeling than carrying around a purse large enough to hold a year's supply of powders, potions, and lotions. <laughs> I swear, some girls are carrying around like a portable TARDIS slash Sephora. I'll eat this herb of life. I said earlier that all weeds were useless. That's not entirely true. Every herb, including the weed, fills up your fullness meter by five. So, not a lot, but not completely useless. This floor is done. We are halfway. Oh, this room has death graffitied all over the walls. Two tanks, mystery enemy. If I had that scroll of sleep, I would use it, but I it's stuck in a change jar. Why don't you make me crack it open? Let's make like a tree. Ouch. And we're gone. Tanks are so slow I can just run away. Hello, Mr. Pumpkin Muppet. Goodbye. With two tanks on the floor, I'm gonna use a scroll of light. Hey, and there is a sleeping gas trap at the entrance to a room. That is a recipe for death. You can imagine if I walked in from that side and there were tanks in the room, by the time I woke up, I would be in pieces spread all over the floor. Yeah, there's another frog angel. Frog angels will attack anything that comes close, including other enemies. So they level up quickly, but they don't power up quite as much as the other enemies. Another thing improved in this game is the tank AI. Tanks in the original game were pretty dumb. They would just kind of shoot randomly almost, but in this game, if a tank knows it can damage you, even with just splash damage, it'll shoot. Send an arrow up his tailpipe. That was vaguely homoerotic. This is one of the rare moments in Sheeran where it's okay to grind a little bit. We used a scroll of light, none of the enemies on this floor can really hurt us, and tanks give you quite a bit of experience. So I'll go ahead and wander around a little bit. See a non-monster character over here. Usually those guys help you out. Whenever a word is in blue, that means throw that item into their face. I think we actually have a couple scrolls of blessing. Excellent. So I'll give him one of those. And from now on, whenever we run into this old man in another run, he'll be able to bless all our cursed items. Four seagulls, the international symbol of happiness, apparently. And we just learned another real-life lesson from Shirin the Wanderer. Next time your significant other complains that their math homework is too hard, just take the calculus textbook and throw it at their head. If you do it just right, they will wake up knowing calculus and they will thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, I just had a horrible thought. Was there some little kid watching this? He actually does it and they sue me. Sad that I have to say this, but I am joking. Do not throw a textbook at someone's head. 
Hey, a slumber party! Wait, those aren't girls. This pumpkin muppet is hanging in there. Oh, there we go. And we really don't need to grind anymore. Let's move on. This is the last town where you can backtrack, and there are the girl's parents. Where could she be? Does she have purple hair, kind of short? Her blood is kind of this color. Does her finger look like this thing that's stuck in my jacket? Nope, never seen her. Not handsome. Hmm, I think this woman might be crushing on Pex? No, Pex too weak to get all the way down here. This is a really small town. Sometimes an event happens if you walk over here, but not this time. She believes it. It's just superstition. Those two kids just summarized 99% of the pointless arguments about religion on the internet. Congratulations. Look at that demonic bunny head hanging on his wall. This house creeps me out. Let's get out of here. We have not been backtracking because we are awesome gamers, but this is the last floor where you can backtrack. Uh, once you go to floor 15, you either have to beat the game or you're gonna die, one or the other. Time for some purse rummaging. Oh my god, that jar of holding is a darbs. Where did you get at? If you don't have a lot of good items or you have a really weak shield, Sometimes it's a good idea to rush through these next couple floors, but we have a ton of items and our equipment's plated. So we are going to loot these floors for everything they've got. Here you see the first new enemy I call the Phronomy. Looks like a sea anemone with an afro. The Phronomy attacks you with a tentacle and sucks your strength out again with the tentacles, Japanese. But if you get hit with that attack several times, it's bad news. Ooh, and here is the grape jelly, weakest of the slime family. Grape jellies ball up and slime your whole body, weakening any equipped sword or shield. If our equipment wasn't plated, pretty soon our sword and shield would become useless, but we've got plated equipment, so we have nothing to fear from the grape jelly. Does make me a little hungry for a sandwich, though. Gator scissor hands here gets to attack twice for every one of your attacks. A gator scissor hands made, of course, in that transportation chamber from the fly. All you do is put an alligator and a praying mantis in together and push the button. This nerdy bird character, when he does his little tail feather shake, uh, electrifies one of your items. An electrified item just takes up a spot in your inventory, it's useless, and it disappears to the next level. So it's kind of inconvenient, but not a huge deal. Grape Jelly knows that he can do nothing. Another sleeping gas trap that could have been nasty earlier on. Grape Jelly just waiting politely. Now you guys just finish up there, I'm cool down here, it's alright. And the first swamp level is done. Do a little purse rummaging, make sure we don't starve to death. Oh my god, have you tried the rice balls here? They are amazing. It's important not to put all your rice balls in one jar in case you lose it. And we made it to the last floor before Vaginus Mountain. This little shaved cactus does a spinny dance that lowers your level by one but he lowers it right before the point where you level up, so as long as he doesn't do the dance twice in a row, you're usually fine. I wish my butt was electric. That'd be an amazing superpower, butt lightning. Sounds like Buzz Lightyear's prankster twin brother. How come they haven't made that superhero yet, huh? Get on it, Marvel. Butt lightning. And his sidekick, Badge Thunder. Purple jellies can split when you hit them into two as can higher powered walruses. The purple walrus can, but every other walrus can split in two when you hit it. I did not know that walruses reproduced by asexual budding. 
but I saw it in Cheer in the Wanderer, so it must be true. Typically, it just takes one wooden arrow to soften up a Fronemy. Here's another jar of hiding. A couple more nerdy birds. If you don't want the nerdy birds to electrify your herbs, you can always just put them in a jar. And they can't do anything, but a leveled up nerdy bird starts to be able to electrify all of your other items too, so you have to be careful. Here is a giant enemy crab, literally. And it has no weak point. High defense, high attack, it just doesn't have any special abilities. Wish I had some peanut butter. If you don't have plated equipment, all you have to do is unequip your items and then punch the grape jelly to death, just like in the old days back on the first floor. And we are here at the base of Mount Virginus. And Mount Virginus has what appears to be an anus that we are going to enter. <laughs> Again, a little homoerotic. I guess a more accurate name would be Mount Vajanus. Not to tell the scientist. You've probably started to notice that Sheer and the Wander is a series of these plateau moments where you're like, Finally, I made it. What? There's still that much left? No, and there's a huge purple army cock in our face. No one wants to see a huge purple cock in their face. Let's go ahead and slap that cock around next episode on Sheer and the Wanderer. I want a girl whose butt shoots lightning with a loyal sidekick named Thunder Vag. She's rummaging through her purse. She's eating big rice balls. She's wandering the floor plan and picking up loot. I want a girl with a big jar and a strong, strong, strong blast shield. Hey, a slumber party. Wait, those aren't girls.